The Mindful Life Practice. And we're going to come onto our backs to start today. So um, you can choose whether you're just lying down in a Shavasana, whether maybe it's nicer for your knees if you have your knees bent and them knocking together. You can also press the feet together and drop the knees open. And then you can choose to put your hands on your belly or grip your palms to opposite elbows or just like relax the arms alongside the body. Ah, uh, he's finally gotten in. Mohammed's here. Yay. Awesome. So taking a couple of deep breaths, inhaling and exhaling. So I'm, I'm teaching a yoga class this morning that's, um, later on this morning that's special for the one year no beer community and yesterday i was kind of brainstorming like themes and ideas and like relevant things to kind of bring up and i came across one passage in the yoga sutras and um it refers to a sanskrit world co word called abhyasa which translates to practice and and when you commit to abhyasa, the, the essence of it is, is really just commitment to your practice, like showing up even on the days when you don't feel like it, showing up, um, you know, even when you're not in the mood for yoga. And so what it really refers, refers to is having, you know, a commitment. And when you make a commitment and you follow through with it, there's like an energy in your life that builds around it. So for this power yoga class, like you guys are all pretty committed. You guys have all had a regular yoga practice. I know you all from, you know, some of you six years, some of you just one year. And I'll invite you maybe if you want to take this intention, it's, it's an intention of, you know, committing to your practice, committing to, to be here for the next hour. Committing to be off your phone, which I'm gonna silence mine as well. You want to commit to anything else while we're at it, just be with it for one more inhale. And then one more exhale. And then we're going to start with um, doing some hip openers and some hamstring openers. Okay, so you're going to bend both knees, pressing your feet down, cross your right ankle onto your left thigh, flex your right toes. Push your right palm into your right thigh. So this is option one, or you can go deeper into your thread the needle. You guys all know where that is. So if you saw on Facebook and Instagram, we are working towards eight angle pose. It's a pretty intense um, balancing pose. It's gonna require arm strength. It's gonna require openness in the hips and hamstrings. Um, it's gonna require some shoulder flexibility. Um, please know that the reason why we're here is not to accomplish a pose. That's really not the point. Release our grip and then 
hook your fingertips onto your right big toe and then just open your knee to the sides. So it's like a happy, happy baby. So this pose, eight angle pose, I actually didn't even think I could do it until my friend Arnis challenged me on Instagram. Um, it really doesn't make a difference if you can do it or not. It's like kind of a journey where we learn about ourselves and the experience is really in the build up to and the, the release from a peak posture. Let's release that grip and then cross your left ankle onto your right thigh, push your left palm into your left thigh, either stay here or lift the leg up coming into your deeper um, thread the needle. And just maybe noticing how the left side feels compared to the right. And then we're gonna release that and take your fingertips hooking around the left toes and then just kind of opening the knee to the side. So I emphasize this a lot in my classes. Um, please just be really mindful of how your body is feeling. Um, especially in power yoga, we, we kind of push really hard. Now let's release that left foot and just take your strap or whatever alternative you have and then hook it around your right sole of the foot and you're going to lengthen your right leg up towards the sky and then you decide whether your left knee is bent or maybe it's lengthened out. I had a yoga teacher when I was in Bali last month. He, he said something super, I guess it was two months ago now. God, doesn't it feel like February was last month? We've been stuck in our apartments for like over five weeks. Um, anyway, he said something at the beginning of a class that really stuck with me. He said, what we're doing is not competitive, it's collective. Let's take that right foot and open it over to the right. And he also said that the sign of an advanced yoga practice is not being able to do crazy things with your body sign of an advanced yoga practice is being able to stay off your phone for 60 minutes. Okay, one more thing. Let's take that right leg all the way up and cross it and then take it across over to the left side. So now you're getting a spinal twist. You're getting an IT band stretch, gazing over towards the right. Three breaths. and then come all the way back through center. And then let's switch to the opposite side. So left leg is extended up. Know that this is a pretty intense hamstring stretch for like first thing in the morning. So please protect yourself. Have a little bit of a micro bend. Don't rush this, Just be patient. And then we're gonna switch that strap into the left hand and start opening your leg over to the left. And then take the left foot all the way back. And then we'll switch the grip and then send the left leg across the body over to the right, tapping into your spinal twist. Stay for five, four, three, two, and then one, come all the way back. 
Let's release the strap, take the knees into the chest, and just interlace the palms at the back of the head, curl your heart up, lengthen through the left leg, tap your right elbow to your left knee, hold it here for five, for four, three, two, and then one, five, four, three, two, and then one. Keep going, five, four, three, two, line crisscross, five, four, three, two, and then one. One more on each side, crossing, five, four, three, two, and then one, crisscross for five, four, three, two, and then one. Come all the way back, palms onto the backs of the thighs. Let's roll up, wiggle all the way back, do one little wrist opener, so taking the palms out to the side, and then turning the fingertips back to meet the knees, and do a little rock forward and back, just kind of getting into the wrist creases. This is gonna be a wrist heavy, or sorry, a hand heavy class as we're doing arm balances, right? So um, make sure you're stretching through the wrists and you're also not dumping your weight into the wrists. That's how you get a wrist injury. So spread your weight evenly amongst your fingers and palms. Let's come all the way back through center, unwind, and then tuck your toes and lift up and back, arriving in your first down dog. You can work your way into this in whatever way you like. You bend if you're one knee, pressing through a heel. And then bend through both knees, take your gaze forward, and then just step your feet up to meet your hands. Forward fold, take your peace fingers, you're gonna hook them around your big toes, and use that connection to draw your heart forward. Elbows are gonna go out towards the sides. And if you want to thread your palms face up underneath your feet, go ahead and your toes will get a little bit of a wrist massage. And please just be careful. If it's too much for your hamstrings, back off. You can get to it later on. And then release your grip. Inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, sweep both palms up overhead and take your palms into heart center. All right, we're gonna start to warm up through our body with some kind of modified sun salutations. Familiar pattern, you guys know what's coming. Take an inhale, sweep both palms up towards the sky. I see that my head is cut off by my camera. See if that helps. Okay, palms are up towards the sky. There we go. And then exhale into a forward fold. Take an inhale to halfway lift. Exhale your way back down, plant the palms, step your feet back, and then let's flow through vinyasa. Coming all the way back to a down dog. Take your right foot up towards the sky, draw your right knee in, step your right foot between the palms, inhale up to a crescent lunge. Exhale back down, plant the palms, step your feet back, and then flow through vinyasa. Opposite side, left leg lifts up. Draw the left knee in, step the left foot between the palms, inhale up. And then exhale back down, step back, vinyasa. Okay, if you were with me last week or the week before, you know what's coming left. Next, take your right leg up towards the sky, bend through your left knee, get a little bounce going, and then hop the left foot through the palms, Inhale up, exhale lower. Know that that hop is optional. It's just to lift your heart rate. You can always just take a normal step through, okay? Does not really matter. Opposite side, left leg lifts up. Bend through the right knee, hop, hop, hop. Ah. Inhale up, and then exhale lower. Step back, vinyasa. Okay, one more. Right leg lifts up, bend through the left knee, gaze forward, hop the left foot, land the toes, inhale up. This time exhale, open to warrior two. 
Breath in, reverse the warrior. And then breath out, come up to your warrior two. Oh, there's Benet. Just dropped out, thought you were back in. Okay, sorry, so you're back in your warrior two. You're gonna windmill palms to the mat and frame the foot. Okay, keep your right palm where it is. Spiral your left palm up towards the sky, twisting. And then we're gonna come all the way into our Bashi Sasana or side plank. So stepping your left foot back, reaching the left arm overhead. Three, two, and then one, land the left palm and vinyasa. One more, left foot lifts up, three-legged dog. Bend through your right knee, gaze forward, hop the right foot, inhale up, and then exhale. Warrior two, inhale, reverse your warrior, and then exhale, come all the way forward, plant the palms. You're gonna roll onto the outer edge of your left foot, take your right arm up towards the sky, and then step back into your side plank. Stay here for three, for two, and then one, land the right palm. Come into your plank. This time I want you to hold your plank. Okay, holding here for five, for four, for three, for two. On one, you're gonna land both knees. Okay, draw your elbows back and then push the ground away. Three more just like this, elbows back, push the ground away. Two more. And then one more. And then this time you're gonna come all the way down onto your mat. Open your right arm towards the side. Bend through your left knee and then start to roll over onto the right shoulder. So we did this stretch yesterday if you were with us in Lujan's class. It's like a nice little opener for the back of the shoulder. And then come all the way back through center, extend through the left arm, and then twist the opposite way. Staying for three, for two, and then on one, come all the way back through center, interlace the palms behind the sacrum, we're gonna lift the heart up, so you're floating in this back bend for three, for two, and then for one, come all the way down. Just plant through the palms. Make your way up to a table and let's rest in a child's pose for a couple of breaths. So we're about to get into the main, I guess the main meat of our flow. Come up through a table, find your way to down dog. And we're gonna take our familiar kind of progression that we've done over the past few weeks. You're gonna bend through your right knee, stack the hips, and then you choose, you either stay here or you flip your dog, landing onto your right toes, outer edge of the left foot, right arm reaches towards the sky. Come all the way back through center, draw your right knee into the chest, take it over to the right elbow. Let's go up and down with the knee, one, two, three. And then take the right knee back through center, bring it across the body, extending the right leg over to the left. Open your left arm up towards the sky. So this is your rock star. Let's roll all the way back down, left palm lands. Bring yourself into a Vashistasana, a side plank. Maybe if you're working on it, you hook your fingertips around the toe and you reach the foot up towards the sky. Let's do three, two, and then one. Take the right foot all the way forward, okay? Take the right palm to the inside of the right foot, roll onto the left heel, and take the left palm up towards the sky. So this is your low lunge. And you can be up here with your right arm here, or you might be down with the fingertips. And I'm gonna invite you, if you're working on your bind, to go for it, bending through the right elbow enough so that the right shoulder lowers. And then maybe you wrap the right arm under, wrap the left arm under, and then just kind of turn your gaze up towards the left shoulder and beyond. So we're practicing our binding here and we're getting deep into the hip. Give me three, two, and then one. 
let's unwind. Come all the way up. Lengthen through your right leg. Wiggle your stance in a tiny bit. I want you to hook your, um, your arm around the back body like this. So left arm is hooking, right arm is reaching forward. Hinge forward and then take your right arm alongside your right leg. Okay, so you can either stay like this or you can shift weight onto your right foot and your right fingertips and find yourself in kind of this bound half moon. Stay for a breath. And then unwind your left arm. Okay, we're going to curl inward so that both palms are now on the mat. Your left hip is level with your right. And then we're going to take a pose that I hate. It's called standing splits. Walk your palms back, 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 and lift your left leg as high as you can. So it's like you're doing the splits, but you're standing. Yay, so fun. Three, two, and then one. Plant your palms a little bit further forward in front of you so that they're almost underneath the shoulders. We are gonna do this because someone just challenged me to do a handstand on Instagram and I can't handstand. Okay, so all you're gonna do is press through the palms, bend through the standing leg, trust all your weight and see if you can just do like little hops. Be careful, please. <laughs> I'm not with you. Don't fall. <laughs> do one more little hop. And then just step back into your forward fold. Grip your palms to opposite elbows. Take a few breaths. Blood flow is going back into the brain. And then let's release that grip one more time. We're going to lift the left leg up behind us. Bend through the right knee. Stack. Or sorry, land the left toes. And then inhale all the way up into a crescent lunge. All right, hands are gonna come into your heart center. You're gonna breathe in, lift up the elbows. Exhale, twist, left elbow, right knee. Press through the palms, gaze over the right shoulder. All right, how are we doing? Good. <laughs> Trust weight onto your right foot. Step your left foot all the way forward. Okay, so both feet are in line now. Lift your heels, sit a little lower. Low, low, low. Okay, you can either stay here, just like catching your breath. If you want to play around with your side curl, right elbows against right hip, left elbows against left knee. Plant your palms, shift your weight forward, and then maybe your feet float off the mat. Give me three, and give me two, and then give me one, and come all the way back. Unwinding, hands in the center. I want you to step your feet wide, heels in, toes out, and put your palms together, opening through the thighs. So either staying in neutral or adding on with our binding. And with our binding, we're going to extend the right arm to the side, lift the left arm up, and then maybe weave the arms back and interlace the palms. And then take the opposite way. Okay, so unwind the arms. Left arm extends, right arm extends. Maybe you connect. And then come all the way back through the center. Sit your bottom back on the mat. Find yourself in a Navasana. Okay, tiny bit of core. I think I forgot to mention at the start of the class that core is another area of focus for this pose. All right, we're going to hover back three, two, and then one curling up, taking three more, three, two, one, and then curl up, two more, three, two, one, and then lift up, last one, three, two, and then one lower all the way down. Take the knees into the chest, rock side to side. Okay, we're gonna make our way all the way up into chair pose. So palms to the backs of the thighs. Let's rock and roll the length of the spine. 
Maybe you can rock all the way up into a chair without touching the ground. Maybe you use your hands, that's cool, doesn't matter. Breath in and then breath out, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, lower. Step back to a plank. Move through your vinyasa. And then come back to your down dog. Okay, same flow on the opposite side. Are you guys ready to quit yet? <laughs> we got this, we're committed. Abhyasa, committed to our practice. Left leg lifts up, bend through the left knee. Maybe you flip your dog. Come all the way back to your three-legged dog. Take your left knee in, holding for three, for two, and then one, take your left knee over to the left elbow and go up and down. One, two, three. And then you're gonna extend your left leg out and take your rock star. So right arm reaches up towards the sky, outer edge of the left foot. Come all the way back, take your left knee in, you're gonna roll into that Vashi Stasana, that side plank, and maybe you take the left toes up and stay three, two, and then one, use your hand to step the left foot all the way between the palms. Roll onto the right heel, take your left palm to the inside of the left foot, and then take the right arm up towards the sky. All right, so we are in our extended side angle. I don't know if you guys can hear all the noises in the background, my cat just keeps like, knocking things off the bookshelf and like throwing them around. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so if you want to come up here, if that's more comfortable, go ahead. Or you might bend through the elbow, lower the shoulder, maybe coming all the way into your bind. Take one more breath. And then slowly unwind, come all the way back. Lengthen through your left leg. Wiggle your right foot in a tiny bit. Wrap your right arm around the back, finding that half bind. Oh, I see someone coming in. Alexandra, must have lost her. Okay, so hinging at the hip, you're gonna take your left arm alongside your left leg. And this is your bound triangle. So that half bind, it kind of spreads through your collarbone. It makes this pose less about collapsing and more about opening. And then if you want to shift weight onto the left foot and left hand and come into your bound half moon, go ahead, or your half bind. Stay for three breaths. And then just take that right palm all the way forward. Take your right hip level, walk your hands back, back, back so they're in line with your foot. Lift your left leg up, yay, standing splits, we love this. This is so awesome. I'm gonna leave you guys here, I'm gonna go get a Starbucks. <laughs> just kidding, take one more breath. And then walk your palms forward, set your palms up so that they're underneath your shoulders. You do not have to do this if you don't want to. I skip hopping all the time. The only reason I'm doing it is because someone challenged me on Instagram. <laughs> if you want to trust weight into your hands and give your foot a little hop, one day working towards handstand prep, ugh, three, two, and then one, step your right foot in between, or sorry, that it lands with both palms. And then you choose for this forward fold. You can grip palms to the toes. You can thread the palms under. Let's just chill out for a few breaths. And then release the palms. Take your right foot up again. Step all the way back, bringing yourself into a crescent lunge. Okay, take your palms into your heart center. Inhale your elbows up. Take your twisted lunge. So palms are gonna press together. And then maybe you hop that right foot so that it's in line with your left. Lower, lower, lower. 
plant the palms and then maybe start shifting your weight so that you're finding yourself in that twist, that twisted crow, three, two, and then one, come all the way back. And let's come back into this um, squat just for a moment. I'm gonna show you guys something. I forgot to tell you, um, if you have yoga blocks, I prefer to do this next pose with yoga blocks. Um, I've seen lots of people do it without, so if you don't have any, it's fine. Um, this is called Lal Asana, and um, this is a great kind of core prep, um, our balancing prep for our, our peak pose. So I like to put the blocks underneath my hands. You can always modify with like books, or you can have hands straight on the mat. Basically, you're gonna come into crisscross. You are gonna plant your palms on the blocks and see if you can bring your bottom to lift up. Okay, so if you're totally happy, oops, just chilling where you are right here, then just chill right here, okay? And if you want to try Lalasana, and another variation of Lalasana is taking your lotus legs. If you know how to do lotus legs, that can kind of help everything just like stay in together. Lifting up, let's take 10 breaths, whatever variation. This is another pose that I hate. Five, four, three, two, and then one, lower. <sighs> okay, you know what, while we're on a roll with poses that I hate, let's do one more. Um, we're on our mat now, on your bottom, and you're going to Open your legs, yay. You might just be right here, hands behind you, kind of straightening your spine. And if you want to take it forward into this wide-legged forward fold, go ahead. Let's take five rounds of breath. One more exhale. You know, this pose is not so bad after all. I'm deciding. <laughs> Let's stay for one more breath. And then come all the way up. All right. We do a tiny bit more work into the hips and then come towards our peak pose. All right. So take your knees back in. Turn back to the front of your mat. Come all the way back into your down dog. Let's take that arm strengthening sequence, core sequence, once again, bend through your right knee, stack your hips, maybe you flip your dog. Slowly unwind back to your plank, knee into the chest. Take your right knee to the right elbow, do your one, two, three, shift into your rock star. Let's come all the way back now, Vashistasana. Maybe you hook around the big toe and extend the leg. Three, two, and then one, step the right foot between the palms. Now this time we're gonna drop into our pigeon, okay? So you're gonna walk your right leg across the width of the mat. Your right knee is behind your right wrist. Uh, right ankle is behind your left wrist. Walk your left knee back to create a bit of space. Take an inhale and then hinge forward. I'm not gonna demo um, thread the needle because you guys are all experienced at yoga. You all know thread the needle. Um, and if you want to go to thread the needle, please go ahead. Let's take five, four, three, two, and then on one, come back onto the palms. Okay, tuck your left toes and lift your left knee. We're gonna lift the right foot up and then step it between the palms, all right? Right palm on the inside of the right foot. Left heel lands. Take your right left arm up towards the sky. All right, so we are an extended side angle. If you wanna stay here, stay here. The past few weeks we've been working on Bird of Paradise in this class and I want to give you opportunities to like build on the skills rather than just do a pose once and then never again. <laughs> so take your left arm back. 
she's a cat in the alley. What is wrong? Oh my god, she looks like she's gonna attack. Oh, there's a bird. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, so the right arm goes underside, underneath the right leg. And if you want to come into your bird of paradise, you're gonna hop the left foot forward. Oh my god, I wish I could show you what my cat is doing. She looks like a lion. And then maybe your right leg extends. Oh, she might be coming into the screen. You can see her in the corner. Okay, three, two, and then one. Let's land back. Step your left foot back. Oh my God, I feel like she's gonna attack me. <laughs> okay, step your left foot back, let's unwind. Hi, princess. <laughs> oh my God, I wanna tell this bird to go away. Okay, step back to your down dog. If you wanna take a vinyasa, go ahead. Oh. Okay, we'll just ignore this cat. All right, <laughs> down dog. <laughs> One more thing, left leg is up towards the sky, opposite side. Bend through the left knee, stack the hips. And then if you want to flip your dog, go ahead. Coming all the way back, take your left knee into the chest. Left knee to left elbow, go one, two, and then three. Extend your left leg out, taking that rock star. Come all the way back. Roll onto the Vashisthasana outside of the right foot. Take your left leg up towards the sky. Three, two, and then one. Take a big step forward with your left foot. Left palm to the inside of the left leg. Land onto the right heel. Inhale up. And then you choose. You can either stay in your extended side angle. Maybe you bend. Take the left arm around. Hook. Oh, we missed our pigeon, didn't we? We will get back to the pigeon, don't worry. Take your right foot forward if you want to come into your bird of paradise. And then trust, weight onto your right foot. Okay, the bird is gone, thank God. Princess, you can relax. <laughs> Stay for one more inhale and one more exhale. And then we're gonna step the left foot down, step your right foot back, unwind. And now come into that pigeon, lay the left shin across the width of the mat. Take your right knee back. Breathe in, and then exhale, fold. Taking five breaths. One more inhale, one more exhale. And then just roll onto your left bottom and come all the way to seated. <sighs> okay, so we are getting into our eight angle now. So you are going to start with your right knee. You can have your left knee just kind of bent. What I want you to do is take your left foot and place it inside your left elbow and then take your right um, elbow around your right knee. Okay, so it's like you're rocking a baby. Rocking a baby back and forth with your ankle. <laughs> and if this does not work, if this is not snuggling nicely, you can always just grip underneath and do this, okay? So you can stay here. If you have tight hips, this is a great place to be, okay? If you're okay with this baby rocking, I want you to try and take your foot now and see if you can put your foot to your ear and like make a little phone call. <laughs> when I do this with kids yoga, I'm always like pretending they're calling their mommy and daddy and being like, hi mommy, how are you? <laughs> so maybe you're calling your mommy and daddy, seeing how their quarantine is going. <laughs> okay, now you can stay here. Or you might hook your right knee around your right shoulder like you're putting on a backpack, okay? All right, we're still here. Now, to get into your eight angle, you are going to place your right palm on the mat. You're gonna place your left palm on the mat. I want you to lift your left foot up and hook it on top of your right ankle. Okay, so you're crossing your ankles. Now, you lift up just like we did in the Lalasana, you lift your bottom, and then extend out your legs and your body hovers forward, and you got it. I don't know if you got it, I can't see. 
<laughs> Take one more breath. Oh, and then let's sit back down. <sighs> all right. I don't know how that went. You guys are all really small. You have to tell me after. <laughs> okay. Opposite side. What we do on the right side, we must do on the left. Pick up your left leg. Rock the baby. You can underhand grip the ankle as well. You can just stay here. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, if this, if this arm balance like doesn't interest you and you're working on something more accessible like crow, Vakasana, feel free to use this time to take Vakasana, okay? Um, all right, so we've rocked the baby. The baby has stopped crying. Now we must phone call our mom and dad. <laughs> You talk to your mom on the other side, maybe you talk to your dad on this side. See how he's doing? <laughs> okay, maybe you're happy just chilling in the phone call. Maybe you're ready to put on that backpack. So snuggle the knee on top of the shoulder. Push your palms. This time it is your right ankle that crosses over the left. This is gonna be interesting. I don't know if I can do this pose on this side. I've only ever done it the other way. Let's see. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, oh shit. No, I can't. <laughs> I kind of got it. One, two, three, four, and then five. Oh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> taking deep breaths. Maybe just taking a moment in stillness. If you want to take one more vinyasa, go ahead. I'm not gonna take another one. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight onto my back. Um, feel free to do one if you want, okay? We're slowly gonna roll down and meet on our spines. All right, so that was a bunch of um, forward folding and like strength building. Um, we're gonna counter all of that forward folding with like some heart opening. So you can um, come into your bridge if you want, just placing your feet underneath the knees, palms on the mat, lifting the hips up, okay? This is option one. If you want to explore your full wheel, we're gonna lift all the way up. Heart is pressing towards the back of the room. Taking deep inhales and exhales. And then slowly roll all the way back down again, tucking the chin, relaxing onto the mat, taking the knees from side to side. And then you're gonna come all the way into center now. Cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh, flex the foot, bring yourself back into that, um, thread the needle. So this is like one of our introductory, um, hip opening poses and it's how we started our class today and at the start of the class I encouraged you to do a little scan of your hips and see how they were feeling. Now I'm going to invite you to do another scan again and then just see if anything has shifted. My hip feels a lot more open, feels a lot more spacious. How does yours feel? Release the left foot and then release the right foot and then take it the opposite way. So left ankle is on right thigh and then maybe you lift the knee up and interlace. One more breath. And then release the right foot. I just want you to cross your left thigh so it's stacked directly on the right thigh. And we're gonna drop both knees over to the right and then gaze over to the left. So this is called um, twisted root. 
it's like your garudasana, your eagle legs. Um, if you want to choose another spinal twist, you guys are all, you know, regular yoga people, so you know what your body kind of craves and needs. And come all the way back through center. And then just cross the opposite way. Okay, so right thigh on left ankle, or is there left thigh? And then drop both knees to the side. One more inhale, one more exhale. Come all the way back and just have a couple minutes before our Shavasana. If there's any last poses that would seal your practice well, feel free to move into them now. I'm gonna make my way to a seated meditation. I come to a shavasana or a seated meditation as well. It's your choice. I'm going to share with you guys um, it's one more passage from, from my teacher Rolf's book. It's a passage about Abhyasa, which is commitment to your yoga practice. He wrote, when I first got sober, I was astounded to hear about homeless people who drank every day for years. And I just did not understand how they could afford it. And what I failed to realize is the power of making something a priority. And if drinking is your priority, you're gonna find a way to do it whether you have a roof over your head or not. By choosing to practice yoga, we are saying that our spiritual growth is important to us. We are making it a priority. Our practice is a shelter that we build for our spiritual selves. the work that we do to safeguard and support the possibility of spiritual growth. The winds of life will constantly wear away at this shelter, but if we stick to our tools, if we stick to our yoga practice, the shelter will hold.
our way up to seated. Just realize this is another class where it's only 30 day yoga challengers in the group, which is super cool. When I did my 30 day yoga challenge, um, we never really had like, oh, you had someone join you. Oh my God, so cute. <laughs> um, we never really had any times where we were just collective as a challengers group. So that's kind of neat. Um, let's take our palms together into heart center. And as your thumbs connect to your heartbeat, just thank yourself for, for choosing to make self-care a priority and letting that energy build around it in your life. And we'll close with the intention that our yoga practice serves and benefits not just ourselves, but the individuals surrounding us. May all beings be happy and be healthy and be free. May the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. So let's finish with an ohm, inhaling, exhaling, and then inhaling through to make the ohm. Taking your breath in, then your breath out. Breath in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful day. Shanti, Shanti, Namaste. The Mindful Life Practice.